Okay. All right. So good morning. Good morning. Begin to settle into your seat. We were just talking a little bit about the energy of that moon last night, right? And um, it's actually a whole series. It's, it's eclipse season. There's three eclipses that are going to take place between now and July 5th. Um, the one that took place last night, the Purdue, I actually, I thought it was, I got confused because I thought it was going to be tonight. But um, it's called the Panubural, Panubural, I can't pronounce it correctly, um, eclipse. And it's a very subtle eclipse with really huge, huge energy. And someplace in the middle, there's going to be a solar eclipse. And then at the end, there's going to be another Panubural eclipse. And this energy is so big because right now there's so much transformation going on in the world. And this particular type of eclipse supports the movement of the new. It supports, um, it highlights our own soul's path. It kind of, um, you know, when you're in the movies and everything goes dark and then there's like, those lights along the path if you have to go to the bathroom or go out and get some candy or something, it highlights our path like that. But it does it in a way that it really kind of, um, it's a guide, but it's a very firm guide. So when we start to go, ah, I don't feel like it, or, oh, I'm kind of scared of it, it gently but firmly pulls us back onto the path. It's almost like we can't help but to accept, invite in, and allow the guidance that this energy brings us. So it's kind of easy to get um, scared of this kind of energy, but instead of letting the fear or wanting to move away from it, just like what's going on in our world right now, right? Instead of trying to move away from the energy, maybe we can lean into it and we can start to trust that through all of what almost feels chaotic, um, what almost feels disruptive, is there's really this guidance that's going to bring us to a higher ground, a new place where there is going to be a very real tangible sense of peace, right? And who doesn't want that? Who doesn't want that? So finding ways to lean into this energy over the next four weeks to really be conscious of the fact that you know, we can reach out, we can touch it, we can close our eyes and we can invite it in, we can absorb it. Feel where you feel the energy in your body. Breathe into those places. You know, maybe we can become co-creators with the way that the universe is communicating with us right now. So think about that, close your eyes, start to fall into your breath. Another thing I've been talking about this week that I've been trying to reconcile within myself is um, the sense of confusion that I'm feeling about everything that's going on, really settling in and noticing the conflicts within me, right? The desire to see healing and to move into a state of non-harm and to not judge. And at the same time, feeling feelings of outrage or anger. Right? And really being aware that all of that exists inside of me all the time in all different ways. So how do I reconcile that, you know? And what I keep coming back to is the practice, is sitting with myself, is allowing my truth to rise up. There is such a, um, a pull when I hear different opinions or I hear something that resonates with me to go, oh, okay, wait, maybe I feel like that. Or, okay, maybe you're right. And I've come to realize that there is no flat black and white answer for right action. Right action has nothing to do with the action you're taking, but everything to do with the motivation behind that action. And the more that I'm able to sit with myself and to start to gain some clarity on what it is I really want, then the easier it is to begin to or continue to show up in this world as that energy. Because right now it feels like so much has changed, but really nothing has changed so much as we've settled down and so things are rising up, things that we haven't paid attention to before, right? So how do I want to continue to show up in this world as part of the solution? How do I want to show up in a way that my interactions and my words bring more healing than harm? Because there are going to be times that I'm going to say something that's going to be hurtful to someone, maybe not intentionally, or maybe given the right circumstances, with my anger bubbling up, maybe it will be intentionally, and then I'll have to deal with the consequences of that. But, you know, to, to really move into a place where I'm more than likely to be a part of the solution and part of the problem, 
And I'm more likely to be able to create a space where other people can step into what's right for them without my judgment on what they should think or should do or what's right or what's wrong or what's whatever. So I found this reading again in this book, The Book of Awakenings. It's like every time I open the page, there I am. I love it. I'm going to read it to you. And it's called The Wisdom of the Torn Heart. The lesson of the flag challenges our trust in the fabric of our lives. It asks us not to resist the wind of spirit that comes along, for the vital energies of life come upon us in sudden gusts of experience, and we can only unfold our true selves if we let go of our resistance and realize that our purpose, after all our suffering, is as simple and beautiful as that of a flag. The great poet Rilke says, I want to unfold. I don't want to stay folded anywhere because where I am folded, there I am a lie. Once again, we're invited to live in the open. We're encouraged and challenged to unfold past our fear so that the appearance of life larger and older than us might flap us into full living. For sure, this is not easy as all our bad experience and protective upbringing has us ready to resist anything sudden or powerful. Yet even when we trip and fall, we learn soon enough that, is the arm, that it is the arm that stiffens and resists the breaks. Often our resistance only makes things worse. As Lao Tzu said 2,500 years ago, the hard and the stiff will be, bro will be broken, the soft and supple, supple will prevail. Whoever is stiff and inflexible is a disciple of death. Whoever is soft and yielding is a disciple of life. So to stay among the living, we're often asked to summon a courage not to resist. This is different than turning the other cheek or submitting to a dominant force in our life. Rather, this is meeting the world in all its painful variety with feet spread and arms open, neither accepting everything nor rejecting everything, but leaning into what is nourishing and letting the rest move through. In this way, the heart becomes a torn flag that knows no country. And over time, it is the little tears of living in the open that we must give thanks to. For it is the slight rips we suffer that let through the blasts too painful to carry. Perhaps this is wisdom, the earned humility of our suffering that doesn't try to hold on to everything. Perhaps this is the wisdom of the torn heart that lets us keep going. So can you move through what's going on around us? in a way that you're authentic, that your voice is heard, that your heart is open, and that people can walk away from you feeling held, feeling alive, feeling seen. If your eyes aren't already closed, close them. And begin to cat-cow with your eyes closed, but go really slow and take long, deep breaths, moving in time with the motion. Really consciously moving through your breath. Listening to the whispers of your soul, what is coming up right now? Can you let the conflicting energies, the conflicting thoughts and emotions, the hate and the love that rises up in you, can you let it all rise up? And then can you embrace that which nourishes you and let the rest move through? Next time you come forward, pause with your heart open. Inhale your arms wide up and around, prayer overhead. And then bring that prayer down to your heart. Close your eyes. We're going to open. Hands at the heart center with Om Namo, Guru Dev Namo. Deep inhale. Om Namo, Guru Dev. 
Namo. Om. Deep inhale, squeeze the pelvic floor, squeeze the navel center. Let the spine get so tall as the crown reaches up to the heavens. And as you exhale, we'll move in to our next chant, Ad Gadename. Ad Gadename at the heart. Jugad Gadename, third eye. Sat Gadename, arms wide open. Siddhi Guru Devename. Back to your own heart three times. Ad Gurename, Jugad Gurename, Sad Gurename, Siri Guru Deve Name. Ad Gure Name Juga Gure Name Sa Gure Name Siri Guru Deve Name Ad Gure Name Juga Gure Name Sad Gure Name Siri Guru Deve Name Allowing your eyes to remain closed, your heart to remain open, your hands at your heart. Feel the energy, the vibration. Feel the love that surrounds you. See if you can consciously begin to send that energy of protection out to every single person that you can think of in this world. Notice who pops into your mind, and if it's someone that raises anger in you or that your mind tells you is an enemy, send it there too, if you can. Freedom in the actions that are motivated by our intentions. Being what we want to see. And taking a deep breath in, squeeze that spine, squeeze everything up, pelvic floor, navel, arms move up in prayer overhead, squeeze and hold. And then as you exhale, allow your fingers to move through your own ecstatic, beautiful, amazing energy. And let your fingers kiss the energy of the earth. Hmm. And then as you open your eyes, we're going to move into a meditation called the meditation to console. So whatever you're feeling now, if you're feeling a sense of disruption of your peace, if you're feeling sadness or powerlessness or hopefulness, whatever it is, this meditation 
consoles and reconciles those feelings and interlaces them with a sense of hope and faith. It's a simple meditation. It concentrates on our chakra system. And right now, for me, the most important thing I can do is pay attention to what's going on inside of me energetically. So it's going to be, the, the chant is Wa Guru, not Wa He, Wa Guru. And it's going to be eight inhales of air, sniffs of air through your nose. And with each sniff, you're going to say to yourself, Wa, 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 eight times. And with each sniff and each wa, you're going to concentrate on a different chakra. So with the first wa, your, your attention is going to go to the base of your spine or the root of your rectum, the energy of the first chakra. And then the next wa, it's going to be right below your navel, your second chakra. The next wa, is going to be your solar plexus. The next wa, you bring your attention to your heart. The next, your throat. The next, your third eye, your crown. And then on the eighth, the energy moving all around you, your auric field. The exhale is going to be guru as you send that energy out to the world. So wa, 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 inhaling, guru. Make sense? Good? Everybody? Okay. All right. So close your eyes. Your hands are going to be on your knees in Gyan Mudra, thumb and um, point your finger together. And your arms are going to be nice and straight. You're gonna bring your shoulders onto your back and then relax, let everything relax. Close your eyes, your gaze is going to be, if you can, up at your third eye, or you can just have a relaxed gaze with your eyes closed. Ready and begin. Guru. Guru, just keep going at your own pace. Three minutes here. And that eighth wa, feeling the energy pouring all around you. After your next exhale, maintain the mudra, return to your natural breath. And then just one time, say the entire chant out loud, eight was, one long guru. And let yourself move into silence, merging with the sound current that you've created. Feeling all negativity begin to dissolve. Feeling the energy of your true voice, your authenticity rising up. Maybe embracing the simplicity of that because what it is, 
is always love. Take a deep breath in. Exhale completely. Release the mudra. Flip your palms over. Hands on your knees. Begin those cat cows again. Spinal flexes. Nice and fast this time. Nice and fast. Waking up that spine. And then continue the spinal flexes, but begin to, as you exhale, bring your chin to your right shoulder. And then as you exhale the next time, left shoulder. So inhaling forward, exhaling, turning that neck. change in perspective, being that torn flag, letting things rip, not staying so folded and true to what you've always believed, lighting in perspective. There's nothing wrong with really getting clear and taking a stand and then listening to somebody else's point of view. Jackie was talking about it earlier. Our daughter had the opportunity to sit and listen to a point of view that she hadn't been that she had never experienced for herself, letting that information in and then maybe letting that change my point of view, being flexible, return to a normal spinal flex, keeping the neck in line with the rest of the spine as you flex a few more times. And then begin to circle that torso around a few times to the right, a few times to the left. Find your center, come to stillness, and begin to circle your neck. Nice big circles, not ear to shoulder, but imagine that there's a pencil at the tip of your chin. And just begin to circle your head as if you were making a big circle with that pencil right in front of your face. Once we find the clarity inside, then we need to clear that throat chakra so that what comes out is representative of what we found within, that clarity within when it comes out, if it's colored with the desire to be liked or it's colored with guilt, or people pleasing or whatever, then it's not our authentic voice and it's not our truth that's rising up. So we clear that throat chakra by moving, you can move in the other direction. By doing this work, we begin to clear the conflicts within ourselves so that when we do step out into the world, when we do take a stand, whether that stand is sitting on your meditation cushion and sending energy out to the world, or whether that stand is walking with a sign at a protest, whatever it is, when you can show up without all that conflict from within, you become part of the solution. Bring your neck to stillness, roll over onto all fours, tabletop. And when you get there, again, moving that spine, spinal flexes. But as you move, first start with a nice, slow, normal, natural cat-cow. And then as your spine warms up, begin as you move into that cat position to shoot your right hip to the right. And then as you move into that cat position again, left hip to the left. Really moving those hips as you move the spine. And coming to center. Begin to sit on your heels just for a moment. Take your arms out wide, bring them up overhead. And as you bring them up, rise up off your seat. Bring your hands to prayer, and as your hands come back down to your heart, sit back onto your heels and continue moving that way, inhaling, rising up, bringing that truth out into the world, exhaling, moving back inside to reevaluate, to check in, to see what's changed. We allow ourselves to flow, and we give other people that permission too. 
to show up however they need to show up in the moment without judgment. We can judge circumstances and we will, we're, we're, we're human, so we're gonna judge. But can you judge a circumstance? Can you like something or not like something that's happened without passing total judgment on the person who has performed that act? Because nobody is all good and nobody is all bad. And that includes us. So can I come to terms with that? Next time you rise up, stay up, open those arms to the sky. Do a little back bend here. And then bring your hands to your heart. Sit back onto your heels. Take a one long deep breath in and out. And then moving back into tabletop, curl your toes. Raise your hips to the sky. Downward facing dog. Move your hips, pedal your feet here if you'd like. And then coming to stillness, listen carefully. You're going to inhale your right foot up to the sky into downward dog split. And then you're gonna step it forward, but not all the way to where your hand is, right behind your hand and out to the side a little bit. And then plant both hands inside that foot and begin hip circles here. Beautiful. So this moon energy that we've been talking about, it's an energy that gives us insight into where we can grow the most over the next few months. The combination of this eclipse season, this trio of eclipses, come to stillness, take a breath here, and then pressing into your hands, step that right foot back into downward facing dog. Walk your feet towards your hands, forward fold. Grab opposite elbows, let everything hang. So it shines a light, it allows to rise up to the surface, that what we need to let go of, that which we need to evolve inside of us. Can we pay attention to that? Can we listen to where the universe wants us to grow and transform? Release your arms down, sway a little bit more. And then planting your hands, step one foot back and then the other returning to down, we're facing dog. And this time bringing the opposite leg, I think the left into downward dog split and then stepping it forward right behind that hand, a little out to the left. Plant those hands, do those hip circles. We can say no thank you. We can just let some of it, it feels like it's too much. It's okay not to take it all on at once. You know, but paying attention to the guidance of the universe, going where we're being asked to go, trusting that this energy coming at this time when there's so much upheaval, in our world, trusting that that's coming now here at this time is not a coincidence. It's part of the path, come to stillness. Long deep breath in and out, and then step that foot back down, we're facing dog. Walk slowly, feet towards hands. And then once you get there, bend your knees a lot so your chest and your belly are resting on your thighs. Let your body be heavy for a moment. And then inhale your arms up to the sky. Interlace your fingers, palms up, stretch, stretch, stretch. And then begin to flow in your, thank you, Crystal. Begin to flow in your side stretches, moving to one side and then the other flowing like the breeze. Being mindful, notice what gives you the best foundation. Maybe move your feet a little bit more apart or closer together. See what you need in order to support you in opening and feeling grounded. So right now, there's so much energy coming from above that we really need to pay attention to the energy below, to the grounding, to the rooting down. question I've been asking myself often these days is, do I really believe that? I don't believe the first thing that pops into my head. 
Come to stillness. Let your arms flow down to your sides. Close your eyes for a moment. Just feel. And then inhaling your arms up wide around, prayer overhead, down to the heart center. When you get there, your palms are going to connect, but open, so the base of your palms are going to connect. Your pinky and your thumbs moving into Lotus Mudra. Bring that to your heart. Inhale that Lotus up to the sky. Come up onto your tiptoes. And then exhale, bringing your arms out to the side, letting yourself come back to your heels. Bend forward so that your torso is parallel to the floor. And then float those arms up again bringing that lotus overhead and back to your heart. And keep going that way, inhaling up, coming up onto those tiptoes, bringing that lotus up, offering it to the universe. Out to the side, bowing down into your own heart. Coming back up, keep going. Our society, our world right now is like the lotus. We're rising up from so much what seems like darkness but it's a breaking through. It's a necessary journey. We can move through the darkness and allow the light of our soul to guide us. But the only way to do that is to pay attention to what you feed your mind. The next time that you find that flower at your heart, you can pause there, return to your natural breath, close your eyes and feel. Your mind, can you help your mind let go of where we've been and instead focus on where we are and where we want to go from here as individuals, but also as a society? It doesn't matter where we've been. There is nothing that we can't overcome from the past if we set our sights on what it is that we want. Take a breath here. And inhaling your arms up to the sky, diving all the way down, planting your hands, stepping your right foot back, and then your left. Roll forward to plank just for a moment, and then back into downward dog. Forward into plank, and back into downward dog. And then let your knees come to the mat. Toes together, knees nice and wide, melting back, child's pose. The GPS doesn't ask you where you've been. It just wants to know where are you now and where do you want to go? If it had to calculate through all the places that you've been, it would never allow you to move forward. And we do the same thing with our past. We bring so much of it in to this moment that we forget that our goal is to move forward into the future. So what can you leave behind? What judgments? And where can you start to, in a very simple way, begin to clear out beliefs that don't serve you anymore? To begin to do the work, not begin because you guys are here, you've been doing the work. To do the work in even a more powerful way, right? To really clear out the inside because if we don't then it's like pouring clean water into a dirty glass if we try to, to make a change from the outside without cleaning out the inside all our hard effort is for nothing because we don't have the clarity within we pour it in and it comes back out contaminated so where can you really begin to find those places inside of you that need to be scraped clean that need to be opened. And then find the courage, the support, the love to do that. Slowly begin to come up. Find a comfortable seat. You can even put a blanket underneath you if you'd like. You're gonna take your hands and move into what's called bear grip. So your right palm is gonna face down. 
your left palm up. You're gonna curl your fingers and they're gonna to come together. Yep, just like Crystal is doing. You're gonna bring that down to your navel center. And let, it rest, let your hands rest right against your navel very lightly. Close your eyes. We're going to breathe here. We're gonna take a deep inhale through the nose. And as you exhale, completely press those hands into your navel point, really expelling all the breath. Press it in. Keep the breath out. Inhale. Let the hands come back out. Hold the breath in. And then again, as you exhale, pressing into that navel, fully expelling hold. And keep going. Long, deep breaths. As our fingers press into our navel, that extra bit of pressure to really release that last little bit of whatever we're holding onto. And that full, deep inhale, allowing what's coming in to integrate so fully. And as you breathe, this is called the Kriya for Tolerance and Compassion. And I'm gonna read as you breathe here, um, something that was written by a woman named Simran Preet about this Kriya. Beautiful words. Our ability to connect from our hearts with compassion and to empathize with, with what others are going through is part of what makes us human. Difficult times are much more manageable when we have loved ones around that have compassion for what we're experiencing. As busy as life can be, and as infuriating as some circumstances are these days, it's easy to get cynical. Sometimes it feels impossible to keep our hearts open under the weight of the world's problems. It's easier to shut down, to turn off the part of us that feels so deeply all the pain and anguish. Rather than approaching people who are struggling from a place of compassion, we might start to believe that people are going through a hard time because they bought it on themselves or because of their karma, or because of bad decisions they made. We might start to believe that there is nothing we can do to help, but, for to but tolerance for other people's differences, that compassion for their experiences, that loving each other through the pain is what is important. If you find yourself unable to connect with the tolerant, compassionate, loving part of your heart and want to open up that space, this is the Kriya for you. Few more. Take a deep inhale. Pull those hands as you inhale. Exhale, relax down. And you can either stay here or move on to your knees. We're going to do a little bit more than a minute of Sat Kriya. So either onto those knees, sitting on your heels or staying right where you are. You're gonna inhale your arms up to the sky. Palms are gonna to come together. Fingers are gonna interlace, pointer up. For women, and we're all women on the call, so I think. So women, the left thumb is in the front. Close your eyes, focus up at the third eye, and we're going to chant together, Sat Nam. Staying at a nice, even pace. With each Sat, the navel is gonna pump up, back, each nam, it's going to relax. Sat nam. 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 Sat. Nam Sat 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 
Nam. Inhale, pelvic floor, navel center up, fingers reaching up, up, up your entire spine, squeezing up, keeping your arms where they are. Exhale completely. One more deep inhale as you do. Imagine the energy moving up your chakra system, red and orange and yellow and green and light blue, indigo, violet, just moving up, 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 up. Exhale, bring your hands to your heart. Pause and feel. And if you're on your heels, you're gonna come back to a seat. And I know I said no ab stuff, but there's a little, this is a little tiny bit of ab stuff. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jen. <laughs> so you're gonna put your hands behind you. You're gonna raise your legs up about 60 degrees. And for one minute, breath of fire. And if you find that you need at any point to bend those knees, you can, but try not to let them touch the floor. Breath of fire in and out through the nose, nice even breaths, steady pace, pumping and pumping and pumping, really moving that energy. So you're staying still, but you're pumping that navel. And if this doesn't feel good for your lower back, you can also relax those legs down, just lean back and continue that pumping. Already halfway there. Almost there. Deep, deep, deep inhale. Exhale, relax your legs down. Come into a seat. Close your eyes and feel for a moment. Now opening your eyes, you're gonna bring your hands into fists and bring them against your shoulders. You're gonna take a deep inhale. You're gonna close your eyes when you start to do this, but you're gonna take a deep inhale. You're gonna hold the breath in and with the breath in, you're just gonna to start to punch the air in front of you until you can't hold that breath in anymore. And then you're gonna bring your hands back to your shoulders. Exhale, inhale and start again. Okay, got it? Go at your own pace. You guys look amazing. It's so funny, we're all in different places and it looks like everybody is kind of moving in sync with each other. There's so much to be said for community energy. Keep going, almost there. One more minute, really letting it all go, all that judgment, all that anger. Sometimes we forget, sometimes I forget that we really are one. And so my anger at you is anger toward myself. Just like my love toward you is love toward myself. Ahimsa, non-harm, can you show up in your truth without causing harm? What is harm? Think about what harm is. Harm is not hurting somebody's feelings with your truth because sometimes feelings get hurt. Right? Harm is dehumanizing someone. Harm is forgetting that inside each and every one of us, there lives a part of me. Ten more seconds. The next time that your hands come back to your shoulders, just relax there for a minute, a moment. And yes, we're all there. Take a deep breath in. Hold, squeeze. 
Exhale, release. For the very last exercise in this Kriya, I love this. It's gonna be a combination of spinal flex and shoulder shrug. So you're gonna inhale forward, exhale back, shrug your shoulders. Inhale forward, exhale back, shrug your shoulders. And keep going. Close your eyes. Merge your breath with the movement. You almost feel like it's this rhythm of, I see you, I feel you, I don't judge you. I see you, I feel you, I don't judge you. I see you, I feel you, I don't judge you. We really start to control our mind when we start to herd that wayward sheep and bring it back onto the same path as our heart. It's really a magnificent tool. The imagination that lies in our mind is our most powerful tool. If we can imagine what we want to see, and then we can start incorporating in our now things that make us feel the way it would feel to be where we want to be, then what we want to be begins energetically to move toward us. After the next dropping of the shoulders, come to center, eyes closed, pause and feel. When you're ready, you can float your eyes open and make your way to your back. And once you get there, letting your knees float into your chest. Placing one hand on each knee and beginning to circle the knees away from each other and toward each other. So opening your knees apart. Yeah, and then bring them together. There you go. And then moving the other way. And coming to stillness, planting your feet on the mat, taking your right ankle, crossing it over your left knee. And reach inside, pull back. And use that right elbow to press the right knee out. Breathe here, keeping the extended foot and shin parallel to the ground. Long deep breaths. And then bringing your arms, releasing your arms, bringing them out to a T. Begin to take that right, the sole of that right foot and bring it down to the left, coming into a twist. You could either bring that foot down to the floor first or leave it in the air, yep. So you're twisting over to the left. Some of you I can't see, but I'm assuming you're doing it right. If it feels good, you're doing it right. And then come back to center, letting your feet plant, switching sides, left ankle. Right up, reaching back for that thigh. Long, deep breathing. Whenever possible, long, deep breathings, flooding ourselves 
that pranic energy, reminding ourselves that there is something so sacred inside of us that no one can put a name or a label on it. We try, we call it prana. But really, it's so big and so sacred, and it's us. Breathe into that, and then release your arms out to a T. Stepping your right foot to the uh, your left foot to the right, coming into that twist. Long deep breaths here. Really allowing this thought to sink in. It's not the action itself that we take that makes it right or wrong action. It's the motivation behind it. It's the energy behind it. Why are we doing what we're doing? Why are we saying what we're saying? Is it coming from a place of clarity? Or is it coming from a place of pain? Come on back to center. Both legs up to the sky. And then let everything settle down on the mat, taking any final twists or stretches before moving into preparation for Shavasana. Letting yourself settle in. Maybe bring into your Shavasta the thought of whether your actions and your words are supporting that which your soul is seeking. Are you standing for what you stand for instead of pushing against what you don't? Are you showing up in this world as what you want to see in this world? Imagine your heart beginning to open like a budded rose with each breath opening a little more. With each opening, a sense of energy moving through your body, compassion and harmony, and peace. And as this rosebud opens fully, blossoming into the truth of who you are. See if you can allow those energies to fill every nook and cranny and crevice of your body. And just for a moment, bring to mind someone or two, a couple of people that you think are enemies, that when you think of them, you think of them pushing against each other. You can be one of those people or not. And for a moment, imagine those people standing in front of you, glaring into each other's eyes. And as that energy moving from your heart begins to flow around them, watch their faces soften as they begin to recognize in each other's eyes themselves. Witness the crumbling of the walls, the flowing of tears as these individuals embrace and merge into one. Rest for a few moments in that energy of unity of truth.
gospel of reality. I am open space as wide as all creation, indefinable, untamed, bearing no name. I am the knower of senses and embodiment. I breathe life into the dirt, the earth, the sky and the stars, the first creative impulse of the artist. Light and darkness are both part of me, yes and no, matter flowing in from the unknown. I am energy and attention, the source, the matrix, and the womb. I am emptiness without dimension. Ask me again and I am different, a changing portrait here then gone. I am what you see and the invisible vessel of divinity. Filled with contradictions, I am also a straight arrow aimed at truth. The mystery and the end of all dilemmas is as near to me as the unseen helix of my DNA. The totality of all being is inside of me and also inside of you because we share the universal gospel of reality. Begin to deepen your breath, bringing movement to your fingers and your toes. Letting your head begin to rock from side to side. Bringing your knees into your chest, taking a little spinal twist one side and then the other. And then bringing the palms and the soles of the feet together, begin to rub that fire inside, burning away anything that isn't your truth. And then Turning to stillness, bringing your knees into your chest one more time and either rocking to your right or up and down on your spine as you come up to a seat. We'll meet with our palms together, heart center, eyes closed as we tune into each other's energy. May the long time sun shine upon you, all love surround you and the pure light within you guide your way on. Please join me in sealing our practice together with a long satnam. Deep, deep inhale. Sat. Nam. Sliding your thumbs to the space between your brow dropping your chin into your own beautiful divinity. Be loved, believe, be true to you. Satnam, everybody. <laughs>